took a little break. Um, first off, thank you to Justin Wade again and Jeremiah Medlin uh, for Purpose in the Future. Thank them for doing that last week. Please go check out those videos on Facebook. Um, like it and share it. Um, then also got a new got a new series coming to you uh, entitled uh, "Stop Tripping, Start Succeeding." Please, please, please look out for that. Stop tripping, start succeeding. Uh, the week of July twentieth through the July twenty fourth. What's up? What's up? July twenty. 20th through July 24th. Be on the lookout for Stop Tripping, Start Seceding. I got some more stuff coming to you in July. Y'all be on the lookout for the flyers for that. They're, they will be out tonight, I promise. But tonight, tonight, we are going to get into this three-part series entitled Getting It Right and Getting It Together. Now, understand, I wrote this about a year ago. Wrote this about a year ago when I was still at my community college, Rowan Cabarrus Community College. What's up? How you doing? What's up, brother? Good to see you. Um, I wrote this while I was at my community college. And so being in SGA, I had the honor of being in SGA while there. I've had the pleasure of working with our early college. So I was at lunch talking to some of the early college students. And I said, hey, I'm working on this workshop. I need a title for it. They gave me this title, Getting It Right and Getting It Together. So, but how did we get to this title? I know, I know y'all asking, how did we get to this title? Well, it all goes back to when I was in middle school. I was in seventh grade. Seventh grade, I was in seventh grade. I got in trouble, running my mouth a little bit too much in school. Teacher called my mama. Now, everybody know when the teacher called your mama, it don't matter what you say, it's over when you get to the crib, especially if your mama knows you did it. Well, I was running my mouth just a little bit too much. So when I got home, of course, I still was running my mouth. Well, my mama being who she was kind of said, okay, I got a village. I'm going I'm to tell your father first, and, but I'm going to tell the team that I got around you. I'm going to tell the team I got around you. So it was one of my friend's fathers. I was at his house. Now, I personally didn't know that he knew what I did, but clearly he knew what I did. And he said this simple quote that stuck with me for a very long time. It stuck with me. He said, if you have your mind right, if you have your heart right, your rear end will follow. If your mind is right, if your heart is right, your rear end will follow. And that sat with me. I started thinking to myself, what, what does that mean? You know, I'm seventh grade. Okay, whatever. Just, okay, I, I got in trouble. Let's get over it. Let's move on. I don't need everybody chastising me because I got in trouble. I know I talk too much. So, but that quote stuck with me. Have you ever had a quote? Have you, somebody ever said something to you? Your grandparents, parents, coaches, mentors, it just stuck to you. It just stuck to me. And anytime that I would feel down or feel upset about myself, I would always say, if I got my mind right, if I got my heart right, my rear end would follow. So it stayed with me. That quote stayed with me. Now that I'm older, I, I truly understand what he meant when he was saying, if you have your mind right, your heart right, your rear end will follow. Your rear end will follow. So, we're going to get it right and we're going to get it together. This is a three-part series. I got three nights of this. Join me on live for three nights. I know the BET Awards is tonight. I know we got other stuff to do, but please, please, please join five minutes of this, ten minutes of this. Watch it after you get off of work. I promise you it will be helpful. It's a three-part series. Your mind, your heart, and your rear end. Your mind, your heart, and your rear end. We're going to talk about the mind tonight. We're going to talk about your mind. What's on your mind? 
What is on your mind? Now, if you remember when you was a little boy, if you remember when you was a child, a little girl, a little boy, when you did something, usually they ask you, what was on your mind? What, what, what's on your mind? When they was having a conversation, they would ask you, what was on your mind? Hey, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? They will ask you what's on your mind. It's, it's crazy that they would ask you what was on your mind. When you was at school and the teacher would ask you a question, she would ask, what are you thinking? What, are, what is on your mind? Can you add something to the discussion? So what's on your mind had a certain significance. It's an important question. Clearly, it's an important question. What's on your mind is truly an important question. But if, we, but if we understood how important each letter in the word mind is, uh, we got to understand letters in words sometimes has importance to why they're in the word. Ah, so now we're, we're going to break down each letter of mind. Why is each letter of mind important? So we're going to start with the M. We're going to start with M. Meaningful minded people. Meaningful minded people. Why is meaningful minded people so important? Why do they have significance? Why are they important? Let me tell you why meaningful, meaningful minded people is important. They understand there's a purpose to everything that, that they do. Everything that they do has importance. I don't care if it's the smallest little thing. Meaningful minded people is going to find significance in what they're doing. And what they understand is every moment of every day, of every second, of every minute, of every hour is important. They live 365 days a year with importance, understanding that every day, every moment has importance. So you have to understand, when you come around meaningful minded people, don't think you just go shortcut them. You're not going to shortcut meaningful minded people. You might as well get that out your mind. Because if they're around you, there's a purpose behind it. And they have a moment. There's a moment. There's a reason. You have to understand. And you've got to have meaningful minded people. And if I was to be honest with you tonight, each word that I'm going to use to break down the, the mind is, is important. We use it. You are meaningful minded. Let me tell you how you're meaningful minded. If you wasn't meaningful minded, you would not call folks that you love. You wouldn't go see them. You wouldn't help folks. Um, you wouldn't do some of the stuff that you do. Because you understand it has a purpose and every moment is important. You got to understand this. It's, it's important that you understand that every purpose is important. Every purpose, every journey, every trial and tribulation that you go to, it has a purpose. Even the bad days, it has a purpose. We're going to get to them bad days. So now we got to the meaningful minded people. Now we know who, who the meaningful minded people are. That's the M. Let's look at the I. Let's look at the I. We got the M. Now we're going to look at the I. Intentional minded people. Uh, you got to understand intentional minded people. Woo! They, they, they something else. Let me just keep it real. Intentional minded people. They something else. Let me tell you why intentional minded people is important. They know why they are doing something. Everything that they do, they know why they're doing it. It has intention to it. It, it, it. it has details. They study the plan. They study the plan. Intentional minded people don't ever go into a situation without a plan and knowing why they're doing and know why they're doing something. They usually know why. And they have a plan. Intentional minded people have that. Coaches, for all my coaches, if you don't 
believe in intentional minded people, go look at a coach. An intentional minded person is a coach, is an educator, is a doctor. Because they got to have a plan. They have to study the plan. A doctor has to know his patient. It has to study his patient. An educator has to know his classroom. If it does not know his classroom, how can a teacher have a plan for this, for, for, to study? A coach. A coach has a plan. Every time a coach goes into the locker room, he just don't say, hey, y'all, we just going to go with the flow today. You know, I ain't even, I ain't even looked at no film. We just going to run an offense. Every coach has a plan. That's why intentional minded people is important to have. Some of the best intentional minded people are old folks. Because they'll tell you, baby, you need to have a plan. How you going to go to college? College students, let me just say for the record, how you going to go to college with no plan? How you going to college, no plan at all? You just, I'm going to show up. That's all I'm doing. I'm just here. You showing up with no intentions. I think, was it, was it Travis Green? He wrote intentional, all things are working for the good. I know that's gospel, but clearly what he's saying, if, if you are intentional minded, you have to understand that knowing everything that you do is important and that you have to study the plan. High school students and college students, do not go into this season with no plan. Go ahead and try to go into this season with a plan. You're going to get left. Some of y'all already behind because you still ain't got a plan. Trying to figure out, well, why I ain't on the dean's list? Well, did you put it on your plan to be on the dean's list? Why I ain't get that internship? Well, did you write a good enough essay to get on it? Did you have a plan? Intentional minded people is important. And like I said before, we each have each of these mindsets. And I know psychologists and, 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 my, and, and doctors that study the brain have these theories about the mind, but this is mine because this is what has helped me. I got to tell you, I cannot be the young man telling my story if I don't tell you what I learned in my journey of life. And this is what I learned about the mind. So for all my psychologists out there, I'm sorry if I'm not saying it politically correct. Don't judge me. Charge my head and not my heart. So we're going to get to the end. But see, the end is the most negative letter in the word mind. Ah, but the end has importance. The end is the negative minded people. Remember what I said. We got all these mindsets. Don't trip. Don't act like, well, I'm just intentional, so I'm good. I ain't got no negativity. Now, you got some negative minded people. But there are some people that is just a lot more negative. They, uh, let me say it for my political, politically correct people. There are some people that are just more negative than most. So you have a negative minded people. Why are they important? They always dismiss the positive. I don't care what they do. They could have the highest GPA in the class. They could have a nice suit on. Ladies, you could be looking good. Fellas, you could be dressing fly. But I don't care how positive other folks is. They gonna find something negative. Well, I should have wore these shoes with it. You look good now. Why are you being so negative? Why, you got, why everything that you say or do have to be negative? Why is it, well, I'm, you made a B and you mad because you made a B. Be thankful with your B. Shut your mouth and get out the classroom. How are you going to argue because you got a B? I understand you wanted the A. But be positive about the B and shut your mouth and get out the classroom. Okay, you gotta be. 
And you, you just negative. Now, I shouldn't have got that B. That teacher just don't like me. Maybe, just maybe the teacher do like you. If you shut your mouth and stop being negative, you'll read between the lines and see the teacher actually likes you. Negative minded people have this mindset. No matter what it is, everything is gloomy. Everything is just down. Everything is just bad. Just no matter. They could get a brand new car paid off and they still hell done broke loose. It's like hell done broke loose everywhere. You get a blessing and you still living in hell. I'm trying to figure out, I guess because he God, because if I was God, I just wouldn't bless you. I'm just going to keep it real on him. How you going to be mad and still talking about I'm living in hell, but you getting blessed? That's negative mindedness. But there's an other side to negative mindedness. And this is the real side of negative mindedness. It's when we see people killing themselves. When we see people hurting other people. When we see people giving up on their dreams and hopes because they are negative in their mind. And if they understand that their goal and dream has significance because they were intentional about their goal and dream and that there are some meaningful people in their life that really care about them, they wouldn't be so negative. You better watch out. Let me just talk plain for a second. You better watch out who you around and who you speaking to because you might be the person that might stop that negative thought. So before you criticize them and down them and put them down, how about you encourage them because they, you might be the last straw that they see. And instead of you putting them down, down when everybody else has, how about lift them up so they can look through their negative mind. It's important that we put my meaningful minded people and intentional minded people. You have an obligation to these negative minded people. And let me just be real. You ain't going to save them all. I know we want to. We ain't going to save them all. So here it is. Here it is. Determine the D. So we got the M. We got the meaningful minded people. We understand, we understand that everything has a purpose and every moment is important. So we understand the meaningful minded people. Now we have to understand the I. The I is the intentional minded people. They know what they want to do, why they're doing it. And they always have a plan. Then you got those negative minded people. You, they always, uh, uh, it's just negative about everything. They don't have nothing positive. And then you have, then they're just gloomy. No matter what happens in their life, no matter how positive their day could be, they just find negativity within their day. But now you got the D. So we got the M, we got the I, and we got the N. But there's one more letter, and it's the D. It's the, it's the D. I'm not talking about the DMs on Instagram that some of y'all fellas be trying to hop up into. I'm not talking about the D. I'm not talking about none of that. I'm talking about the D. I'm talking about determined, determined-minded people. Determined-minded people. Determined-minded people. Why is determined-minded people so important? They have influence on others and who's around them. How you doing tonight? How you doing? How you doing? Let me say that again. Determined-minded people. They have influence on others and the things around them. Get you some di college students and high school students. If, if you don't do nothing else, Get you some determined, determined minded people and some intentional minded people in your life. If you don't do nothing else, get you some intentional minded people and some determined minded people. Because when folks are determined, they're not just determined 
on their own goal. Uh, their, they, their whole goal is to bring other people on the boat with them. If you understand determined-minded people, you'll understand that everybody that they come around is helped, is changed, is is for the better. So understand that everybody that you come around, understand, be determined. Be the person that has influence. Be the person when everybody is going one way, you're going the other way, and they follow. Be determined. Influence others. College students, I'm telling you, you got to find something that influences you. Or you going to find somebody or something that influences you. But get you some positive, determined people that, that, that are determined. Because determined people that are real influencers, let me tell you what they're doing. they pushing you to go to class when your butt don't want to get out the bed. Determined-minded people are influencers for you to go to the city council meeting and for you to go to the polls. And let me just say for a sidebar, for all my people protesting, if you do not go vote on November, your protesting is in vain. Let me just say that for a sidebar. I need you to not just be determined protesting. I need you to be determined at the polls this year. I need you to influence somebody else to go. College students, you have an obligation this year to determine somebody else to go to class, to determine somebody else to go to, to assembly, to determine somebody else. You have the opportunity to change everything. You have the opportunity to change a whole generation, but it determines on your mind, your determined mindset. Are you going to influence folks? How are you going to influence them? Are you going to influence to go left or right? You got to understand that determined minded people always have influence on folks. Good God in here. So here's the second piece. Here's the second piece on determined, determined minded people. They always want to touch somebody else's life. Determined-minded people always want to touch somebody else's life. Why am I going to be get a blessing if I ain't going to help nobody else with my blessing? Okay, for my church folks, for my churchy people, you'll get that. Let me say it how, my, how the country folks will say it. Why am I going to build a bridge and burn it down and not help nobody cross over the bridge? If you just going to build a bridge so you can get over, it, all, that ain't going to matter at the end because ain't nobody going to recognize you or know you. All they going to know is you built the bridge, got successful, and kept it moving. But if you build a bridge and you take other folks with you and you help them cross your bridge and they influence other people and they build a bridge, you understand that you are touching lives. Educators, I need you to understand this. You are building bridges and every bridge that you burn down, you are hurting a student. Every time you burn down a bridge, you are hurting a student. My parents, I need you to understand this. Every time you burn down a bridge, every time you kill your child's dream, every time you tell them that they can't do something, you're burning a bridge. Be the one that, that, that influences them. Be the one that touches them when nobody else believes in them. Be the one. Be that one person. You have to understand, determined-minded people always influence and they're always willing to touch somebody else's life. So here it is. So how am I the young man telling this story? What does this have to do with me? I'm glad you asked. Because at one point in time in my life, I was very negative-minded. Yeah, I had a smile on my face you can have a smile on your face and still be negative minded. You can still fake the smile. You can fake the funk. Like my old folks would say, you could fake the funk. 
I never, I never forget it. I was so gloomy and down inside. I had negative mindedness. No matter what I did, I always felt like it was not good enough. And let me tell you to my young people, whatever you do, believe me, it's good enough. It's good enough. Don't let nobody ever tell you it's not good enough. If you know you gave your best in the classroom and you did all that you can, it's good enough and you can do it. But I was very negative minded. I was gloomy. No matter how positive stuff was, I found the negativity in it. And nobody really knew because they, I faked the funk. I still had a smile on my face. I still had, had joy in my life. But it was one it was one teacher in middle school and her name was Miss Curran and she was my student council advisor. And me and her were at a conference. It was a middle school conference. We were at a retreat. And she me and her were having a conversation. And she said, if you don't live the way you want to live, you're never going to be happy. If you don't live the way that you are, you're never going to be happy. Now, did I, did, I, did I struggle, young people? I struggled getting through my negative mindedness. Let me just, you ain't gonna just wake up and say, I'm determined now. You're not, let me just be, you're not just, it's gonna take some time. It's gonna take some steps. It's gonna take some trials and some more tribulations for you to get to that. And now that I'm 29, I'm so glad that I got over the negative mindedness. Because I'm more determined to influence other people and to touch other people's lives. I'm more meaningful because I understand that everything that I do has a purpose. Every moment, every second, every minute, every hour has importance. It's meaningful. And now what I truly understand more than anything is that I have an intentional mind. That I have a plan. That I know that I'm going somewhere. It looked like I wasn't going somewhere. Let me tell you young people, it may look like that you're not going somewhere. It may look like that you got to fall, fall, by, fall by the wayside. It may look like, but I'm telling you, if you just get through your negative mindedness, if you just get through your struggle, uh, my mama would tell me, if you just hold on to God unchanging hands, that, that's for my faithful folks. If you just hold on just a little while longer, if you just keep striving, I, I, I tell you tonight, and this is just the first night of getting it right and getting it together. If you understand your mind, if you understand that your mind has a strong value, if you understand that every thought has a purpose. If you understand that the negative thought has a purpose, the meaningful thoughts has a purpose, the intentional thought has a purpose, the determined thought has a purpose. Every thought has a purpose. But you're something to think about. I know you're asking, where's your something to think about? Where's your, here it is. Here's your something to think about. And it's a question. Where's your mindset? And I'm so glad I'm doing this series now. And I'm glad I'm redoing it. Because I did it last year. I, I watched it. I didn't like it. I said I was going to do it again. And this is the time for me to do it. Because high school students and college students, you, you've been through a lot. The trials and the tribulations that you have faced this season has been a lot. But I want to know where's your mindset? Where's your mindset? Where is, are you the determined minded person right now? Are you the negative minded person? Are you the intentional minded purpose? Are you the meaningful minded person? Remember the, 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 the topic, what's on your mind? That, that's a real live question. And I know for some of us, it may look like it's just a basic question. It's just, look, that's just a regular question. But if we truly thought about that and sat down and thought truly about the significance of that question, what's on your mind? That, that question has very deep importance and significance. So, first night. 
we understood. We had we found out what's on your mind. What's on your mind? Where's your mindset? Where's your mindset? I'm finished. I promise y'all I'm finished. Real quick, a couple of announcements. Tomorrow night, um, join me for night two as we will be talking about the heart. We got the mind. Get your mind right. Get your mind right. And then tomorrow night, we're going to talk about the heart. The heart and how important and significant the heart is. Getting it right and getting it together. I hope y'all enjoyed this tonight. Uh, please continue to watch my video, share it, follow me. Um, tell your friends, your family, your loved ones, your cousins, and your enemies to follow me. Um, they can join the live stream because I'm just here to tell my story and help educate somebody else and help somebody build their bridge because I got my bridge and I'm just trying to help somebody build theirs so they can help other people over. But I'm signing off. I see you tomorrow night, 7 p.m. tomorrow night. It's your boy, Charles. But y'all know when I'm on this mic, just a young man telling his story. I'm signing off. Y'all be blessed. Y'all have a good evening. I pray that your family, your friends, and that you are doing well and that you stay well. And please stay safe. Tomorrow night, 7 p.m., I'm not going to tell you the topic title, but just know we're going to be talking about the heart tomorrow. We got our mind right. Tomorrow night, we're going to get our heart right. I'm signing off. It's your boy. Y'all be good.